Welcome to the Maker Mastermind Show, your weekly blogcast. I'm your host, Larissa Lewis from the Indie Business Network. Hi, everyone. We're so excited to have you back for our third episode. As always, Donna Maria, founder and CEO of Indie Business Network, will be joining us in just a few seconds. I want to make sure to say hi to all of our replay viewers, too. So type hashtag replay below so we know that you've been here. And also feel free to ask any follow-up questions you might have. Donna Maria loves to answer whatever questions might be holding you back in your business. Even if, my, if it's not super relevant to our topic, always feel free to pop down your questions in the comments so we can help boost you over that obstacle. <laughs> and today's show is sponsored by Elegna Soap. Today's product is this peppermint scrub soap. I absolutely love it. Founder Angela is a chemist that moved into soap making. She loves creating new products, mixing and blending new ingredients and scents and colors. This particular show, soap she shared with me, and the prize you can win today, is her peppermint scrub. If you have trouble waking up in the morning, this is the ultimate wake up soap. <laughs> These crushed apricot kernels exfoliate while you're invigorated and awakened by the cool peppermint. This is the great way to start anyone's day. <laughs> One thing I also love about Angela of Olegna is that she also teaches classes in soap making to adults and young people in the Long Island School District where she also teaches. She loves spreading the handmade spirit to kids. You have to check out her Instagram to see some of the adorable creations she helps them make. As you know, you can win this soap today by asking a question down in the comments and we'll select a random person for this awesome prize. Uh, speaking of which, a huge shout out to last week's winner uh, who won our awesome prize from Clean Spot. So we're very excited. Put your, question, put your questions down in the comments and we'll see, select this week's prize winner. So let's get started. Donna Maria, I'm so thrilled to be chatting with you today. Hey, Larissa, how are you? Did you tell everybody that Alegna is Angela spelled backwards? No. <laughs> how cool I'm is that? Like, that? I knew her for like 10 years before I noticed that. <laughs> That's so cool. It's so cool how people come up with their business names, isn't it? I know. And what else is cool is like, she's a chemist who became a soap maker. It's like, does that really happen? That's like so amazing that we live in a world and in a society today where it's like not unusual anymore. Like 40 years ago, people would be like, what? Like you have to do the same thing your whole life. Right. You don't have to do that anymore. So I love that. I love that about the entrepreneurial spirit and the entrepreneurial uh, environment that we're in today. Absolutely. How was your weekend? Um, well, it was great. Um, SATs for oh. my daughter on Saturday and a full entire eight hours of football oh <laughs> in the rain oh with my son who caught three touchdown passes wow congratulations <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so it was pretty good awesome it was so, wet but it was good as everybody knows uh donna maria has no idea what the question of the week is um, this is a great and awesome way to tap into her mentorship skills in the raw, so to speak. So you're getting your unba the unbaked answer to your entrepreneurial questions. Um, so Donna Maria, one thing you're extremely passionate about, and I hear you talk about a lot, and um, surprisingly, lots of new and existing entrepreneurs neglect this, haven't started it, or are not sure where to start. Uh, you, on the other hand, are always so consistent with it and always talking about how important it is to grow a business. So dun dun dun. <laughs> What are, <laughs> what, be? what are your top three newsletter secrets? Oh, my top three newsletter secrets. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Newsletter secret number one is it doesn't have to be perfect. Like it doesn't have to be like done. You don't have to have the perfect template. You don't have to have the perfect ideas. Um, you don't have to worry that what you're doing today um, is going to be different from what you might be doing six months from now. So I think the first secret is to not worry <laughs> that it's going to be wrong. Okay. And let me just tell you why this is such a good question for me, because my newsletter yesterday, and I've been publishing a newsletter for almost 20 years. Okay. My newsletter yesterday was all about, I literally kid you not. And those of you, I know there's some people here who subscribe to my newsletter. And Angela at Alegna actually wrote me back and said, I'm so glad you said this. My newsletter yesterday was all about how I'm not sure what my newsletter should be about. Like, I want to serve you. I want to be helpful. Um, and here's what I've done in the past, but I don't feel like I'm quite in the flow. Like I come into the flow of newslettering. 
I move out of the flow, in, out. So be okay with that. Like, just relax into it. You're living a life. You don't have a template for everything. Um, so just connect with your people. That's the most important thing. Okay, so number two, uh, be consistent. Be consistent. Um, don't do this. I have a newsletter. Donna Maria said to get one. It's great. It's April. I'm on a roll. But then I don't do it again after June. And then it's Christmas. And I want everybody to buy my stuff. Oh, my goodness. It's November. I think I'll send out a newsletter. Don't do that. Do not do that. Like, it's better to wait until January and start over again than it is to pop into their inbox and say, I was just thinking about you when really you just want them to buy your stuff. So be consistent. And as you're doing that, number three would be be authentic. Like, be real. Like, if you do decide to do that in November, just come out and say it. All right, you guys, white flag here. Totally messed it up. Haven't talked to you in a while. Um, but it is Christmas and I do have the products you love. So I you know and I'll do a better job next year. What would you like to connect with me about? Like, you know, how can I serve you better? How can this publication be something that you can enjoy more? And then whatever they tell you to do, do that. So pay attention to them. So I think those are the three top tips I think that I would share. I really like those, especially the authenticity one. There's so many times where people really aren't sure what to write about. And yeah. being able to share your personal story really gives you an authentic message in your newsletter. Yeah, I think it is so important. And honestly, it's it's expected today. Like non-authenticity, even if it's nice and neat and in a beautiful template, it's just going to get you nowhere. It's just so don't overthink it. Don't, oh, my gosh, it has to be this, this, this and this. You, once you get started, it will evolve and it will get better. But the thing that happens to most people is, not most people, but a lot of people is they just don't get started. And I literally work with people all the time and I will like, you know, encourage them to send out a newsletter and they'll finally do it and they will email me and go, oh my gosh, I got a sale. Like, I know, I know that, I know. <laughs> That's how it works. Sure. <laughs> it's very, very powerful. And people are, you know, oh, my gosh, I need to take the latest Instagram course. And oh, my goodness, and all the things and the Pinterest and the algorithm changed. Well, the best thing about a newsletter is you are the algorithm. <laughs> like, you don't have to worry about their algorithm changing because you can create your own algorithm. And that's most powerful anyway. And you have control over that. And it's not a third party that's controlling your destiny. It's you talking straight one-on-one -on -one to the people that want to buy your products. Like there's no better power than that. You cannot have an Instagram feed that's more powerful than that. That is an excellent point. You definitely have more control over your newsletter than you do some of the other uh, promotional outlets. Yes. Um, yes. To the point, a lot of people always ask um, how salesy should the newsletter be? Um, you, see, you were mentioning um, uh, one of the newsletter examples that you were talking about, but you know, how do you only talk about a product? Do you integrate the product into a story? Do you just tell the story? Kind of, what, do you, what are your suggestions for how salesy a newsletter should be? The best newsletters I've seen integrate sales with what's happening in your life. Here's what's happening in the studio this week. Here's a picture of the UPS guy who picks up all the products and you know, that could be a nice one too, depending on how the UPS guy or gal looks. Yeah. Right? Here's a picture of the, you know, Robert, the UPS guy. And, you know, yeah. I mean, he'd probably be happy to wave and say hi to everyone. Like, you know, just this is him. And, and this week, our top selling product was the peppermint soap. You can get it here. And I also learned that, um, you know, whatever else it is that you learned this week, I signed up for a new show in August. Please mark your calendars. Um, I also learned how to do a better job of swirling your soap in the future, like with this new neat trick that I learned. You can tell them about that. So just let them know that you are sincerely making every effort to enhance their lives with your products. You, you already do that every day. What you need to do is to just embrace the concept of telling people about how you're doing it. That's really all it is. You already do it. If you're making the things that you sell, 
you have so many things to write about that are interesting and you have pictures to go along with all of it. And you have this, which is your power tool, take a picture and post it or put it in your newsletter and then repurpose that into a blog post, which I know is not our topic today, but just put it in the newsletter and just share. And it doesn't have to be long. Yeah, there's so many, especially when you're running your own business, there's so many opportunities to capture that behind the scenes look and yeah. uh, show people what you're all about. And people are fascinated by that. That interests them. That's why reality TV, <laughs> people will sit on a couch for hours and watch other people's behind the scenes of their lives. That's a clue right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, those and are some really why stories are so popular, right? Yeah, absolutely. Those are some really great tips to help us all. Um, did you have any final last minute tips on newsletters you wanted to share? Yeah, do one. Just do one. <laughs> I mean, really, because I think what we struggle with today is there's this, there's this, there's this, the new thing I got to learn on Instagram. And, and see, here's the thing. The owners of those social media sites want you to spend more time there. So they keep you on your toes. They're always doing something new. The algorithms are always changing. And then they get free publicity by all the bloggers and the social media experts who blog about it. And then before the ink is dry on the blog, ink is dry, if that even happens, the algorithm changes again, and then you have to drop everything, and then everybody starts complaining. So just don't buy into that, and then you won't ever have to complain. Don't worry about it. Make your feed look nice, and focus on connecting authentically, consistently, over and over again with the people who have subscribed to your newsletter, which means they've opted in to get an email from you because they want to hear from you. Pay attention to that and they will reward you by responding to you and by buying your products. Awesome. So if we just all really need to just get out there and get started is your number one tip. Yes. And you can use MailChimp started. and you can use Constant Contact for those of you who aren't sure what to use. There's other ones, but I think those two and, and there's, you know, there's new ones all the time. See, here's the thing. Don't think that, oh my gosh, she told me to use constant contact and then here comes another one. If it works, stay with it. Okay? With it. Don't be, but just make a note in your little, maybe I'll need this one day notebook. Come back to it later. But if it works, stay with it. Those are two of the most popular ones and they're easy to get started with and they're free until you have a certain number of subscribers. Okay, excellent. So that's our, that's it for today actually. Um, Another showdown. Very excited, but sad to be leaving you. <laughs> <laughs> so sad. <laughs> so if you're watching, you've not yet nailed your newsletter plan. Now you know what to do. You can get out there and get started. Um, get it done and use this group to help each other with any comments and discussions. So if you have any questions, let us know. We'll get to them. And uh, we'll see everybody next week. All right. Thanks, Larissa. Bye, everyone. Bye. Have a great week.